You know I have to say it because some people need to hear it. But this video is all about hate, okay? There's not a single ounce of love that's being spread in this video. This is all about spreading hate. I hated these books. And if you loved them, great. Great. Um, but you clicked on this video and this girl didn't like them. I tried to rank these from like 11 to one, one being like, I actively tell people not to read this book, like actively have and will continue to do so. And then 11 is like, you know, it just, it wasn't for me. It wasn't for me. And 11 is going to be arsenic and adobo. I'm putting it at number 11 because while it really offended me, I don't think it will do so for other people necessarily. Um, I think that this is a two star book in general. I gave it one star, but it's a two star book overall because in a generic sense, this book is not good. It's not good. It's lazy. It's boring. It's cliche. It's a mystery where like um, a random small town girl somehow like out detectives, all the actual detectives with like ridiculous logic and is always tampering with evidence and like stealing things and talking to witnesses and messing up crime scenes, but then is never admonished for it and is like somehow always gets away with this stuff, which is not good in my opinion. But the reason I gave it a one star personally, personally, is because of the diabetic representation in this book, which is abysmal. I do not think that Mia Menansala was trying to offend anyone. I think that it was blatant ignorance and I do not understand how, not even a sensitivity reader, but just like an editor didn't tell her not to write this in this book. This girl has a ex who is a type one diabetic and she works in like a bakery or a restaurant and he comes in and she's like, she makes a dessert for the person he's there with. And she's like, oh, well you can't eat this cause you're diabetic. And he's like, yeah, I can. Like I'll take some, thanks. And while he's eating it, he gets sick and he dies. And the way that all of the characters, and I mean many characters, not just her, the main character, which we're supposed to like, but like the detectives, like cops, relatives, friends, um, customers, all say that it was because, oh, he was, um, he was in poor health and he didn't take care of his condition. And how, like, why was he eating a dessert anyway? And basically like, insinuating that he was asking for it and that he deserved to die because he was a diabetic and he was eating a dessert. When them saying he was in poor health is ridiculous because he is previously stated as being incredibly healthy and good looking and like going on marathons and stuff. So how is that portrayal mixing with the character's portrayal? The thing about chronic illnesses is that people will blame anything on a chronic illness and more despicably, they will blame that chronic illness on you. It's your fault. Like I have type one diabetes, so I understand that I'm coming from a personal space and that I'm speaking of this very sensitively, but as someone who has diabetes, I feel like I do have the right to talk about how and why it upset me, you know, just in case somebody else there out there does have diabetes or loves somebody that has diabetes and doesn't want to read about that because it's really going to piss them off is that diabetes is really hard. It's really fucking hard. And just staying alive is difficult, but then also being healthy on top of that, having a job on top of that, having a social life on top of that, like all of that stuff is so difficult. So for a character who's supposed to be like around the same age as me and like seemingly like, you know, fit and being seen as the reader, you're seeing him like he deserved to die because he was a diabetic and he ate something sweet, even though he took his insulin. That really rubbed me the wrong way. I didn't like that. So yeah, number 11. Number 10 is The School for Good Mothers by Jessamine Chan. This is supposed to be about where if you do anything wrong, like you accidentally are late to pick up your kid from school, not even spanking, like not hitting or verbally abusing, but like little mistakes, then that mom will get sent off to the school for good mothers where it is just, it's disgusting. It's so disgusting the things they do. They make them like chant out like, I'm a bad mother and I'm like ruining my kid's life and, and I'm here to be better. And I'm like, what? Like, wh what are you talking? That's so toxic. It's so toxic. And like, I get, I get that the intent was that there is an unrealistic expectation put on mothers. I get that. But the way that it was done was not with nuance. It was not with depth. It was with a blatant, in your face, over dramatic, hyperbolic, ridiculous situations and verbiage where I was like, 
is this written by a woman? Because this reads like it's written by a man. Like this definitely reads like it's written by a man. I do not understand. And then the fact that there was like the um, school for good fathers that had uh, barely a percentage of people at it compared to the women's school and then the men were treated great and like barely ever had to go there. And I was like, yeah, okay, I get it that men have more leniency, but this is like ridiculous. Like it was just, it made me angry. Like the book actually made me angry and it made me angry for women I know who have kids. And I was like, this is not, I, I don't understand people like, which I'm, I'm sure there are people that like enjoyed reading this, but this made me so angry that I genuinely like can't understand liking this experience. Number nine was such a letdown and that's I Kiss Cheryl Wheeler by Casey McQuiston. I found this book insanely toxic, like insanely toxic. And I was like, you're marketing this to teenage girls in a market in which this representation is very minimal and this is a very famous author so this is going to be read by a lot of people and it's so toxic one of the girls who's i think supposed to be like valedictorian goes missing and then the other girl who's right below her who they're obsessed with each other is like well i have to find her because it's not as fun if i win by default if she's not here i have to i have to beat her literally verbally and emotionally so abusive to each other i don't get why she's so obsessed and then it's like Cheryl Wheeler's boyfriend is also trying to find her, but then it's like, okay, well, you have her boyfriend, and then you also have a boy who she made out with at this party. That's like, okay, so you have this girl who's obsessed with her, her boyfriend, and a boy that she made out with while she was with this boyfriend, but also obsessed with this girl. What? And then it's also one of those things where it's like every single character turns out to be queer in some way, but not in a, oh my God, awesome uh, representation way, in a queer baiting way. And I did not prefer that. And also I really hated the ending where they made the toxicity seem like this beautiful romance. And I was like, no, I mean, y'all deserve each other, but damn. Number eight is The Last Thing He Told Me by Laura Dave. Now I gave this one and a half stars. I don't think that this is like an offensive book by any means. It didn't make me angry, but what did, what did kind of make me angry is that this book was a Reese Witherspoon like book club pick. And it also won, it won Best Mystery in the Goodreads Choice Awards. What book did, what book did the people that rated this read? because it wasn't this book. And every single person that I've spoken to that's read this book that I've like actually seen face to face or heard on the internet did not like this book at all because it is so insanely boring. It's so boring. It makes no sense. The writing is terrible. The characters are terrible. The vibes are terrible. The plot is terrible. Like it all is so messy. It's so messy. And the thing is, this feels like it is not accessible to a younger audience. And I mean younger than like 50. Like it's not accessible to anybody that doesn't have like a bless this home sign in their house because it's so like, uh, not like cozy or mature when I say like it's too adult. I mean like you have to be watching like your 17th rerun of NCIS like to catch the vibes of this book, okay? But the thing is, here's the thing. So this is a mystery, but when I tell you that this main character and her like new stepdaughter who doesn't like her and they're like trying to figure out their relationship, blah, 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 whatever. They are trying to find the dad who went missing, okay? Cause he like, whatever, he's a criminal. So he runs away and they're trying to find him and they miss and just look past the most obvious blatant clues where I'm like, I'm reading it on the page. How did, how are you not seeing it? I'm seeing it and I'm not even there, but there will be like just a little tiny thing said. Like there's at one point in the book where somebody says something like that maybe somebody like that this guy like might have been known at this one high school and her and this girl pack up and fly all the way to fucking Texas just to see, just to see. And oh yeah, of course he went to that high school. I'm like, you flew all the way to Texas because you thought like maybe a Hail Mary chance? You gonna do research? Like, what about the blatant clues that you were missing? What? Also the ending, bad, really bad, really bad. This book, the fact that it won is honestly insulting. So Happy For You by Celia Lasky. I don't feel like anybody agrees with me on giving this book one star. I know so many people that love this book and I did reach out to several friends who really enjoyed this book and asked them very wholeheartedly, I was like, tell me 
what it is that I'm missing in this book. And they were very insightful. And uh, after a couple people like explaining it to me, I see how I took the information in a different way than they took the information. And a lot of people told me that they read it as a satire. I didn't read it that way. That is not the way that it came across to me. I tried reading it again. It wasn't coming across that way. And I was like, okay, I'm not getting it. I'm not reading it the same way that other people are. And that's great. If you love this book and that's the experience you got out of it, awesome. Great. That wasn't me. I don't know why. I don't know why I could not read it like it was a satire. I was like, this is not a satire. This is just terrible. And it's because, so it's about this girl, okay? Robin, hater. She's a bitch, okay? She's a raging bitch. Let's call a spade a spade. Robin sucks. <laughs> sucks. And she doesn't believe in marriage. She doesn't believe in true love. She doesn't believe in all that. That stuff is ick. Sicky, icky, icky. Okay. And if anybody ever talks about like having kids, getting married, like buying a house, being in a relationship, she immediately shits on it and like tells them that they're wrong and starts explaining all the ways in which what the way they want to live their life is just controlled by like the marriage conspiracy and the American dream and all this stuff. And I'm like, some people just actually love other people. And like maybe want to get married. Not everybody is falling for an American dream trap. Like I'm not saying the American dream trap doesn't exist. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. But, or like the marriage infrastructure is not something that's just built on making money and forcing people into secular households. Yeah, it is. But the way that, here's the thing. I agree technically on principle with all of Robin's ideas. But the way she executed them and the way she represented them is abhorrent. And it's because I have such a trigger with people belittling other people for their interests and their hobbies. It's like when men belittle women for like liking K-pop or makeup or Taylor Swift or books. I'm like, what is your deal? Why is it that just because you don't like something, I'm not allowed to like it. If I like it, isn't that valid enough? Isn't that a valid enough reason for it to be something that somebody could find worthwhile? And there's literally, literally a point in the book where a woman isn't trying to argue, isn't trying to argue. She just, like somebody says something about vaccination. I'm pretty sure Robin brings it up fishing. And the woman just like states, like, she's like, oh yeah, like, you know, that that's not really my thing and walks away. She's not trying to fight. Those are not fighting words. She just responded, walked away. And Robin gets in her head. She's at a freaking wedding party, a bridal party, okay? She leaves a bridal party to go to a local bookstore to buy three books, three books on like, literally they were called like vaccination for dummies or like something like that, or like you should vaccinate or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Buys them and goes and gives them to this woman and says like, you're welcome. Like I'm teaching you how wrong you are. And the woman is like, I didn't ask and also go fuck yourself. And I was like, here's the thing. I believe in vaccination, but I would not do that to somebody. I, I would I would be so furious if I saw somebody do that to someone. That's disgusting. Like, I don't care how strong you feel about it. That woman wasn't trying to fight you. Like, okay, I'm sorry. And also Robin never got her due diligence. She got away like basically completely scot-free with her entire attitude and she never learned from it. So I hated it. Number six is unfortunately a true story and it's true crime addict, the mysterious disappearance, the mystery, the mysterious disappearance of Mara Murray. I don't know. It's got like the longest title of all time. It's by James Renner, who in my humble opinion, based on one book from his point of view, is kind of a piece of shit. Um, this is, he, this is a true story. Okay. And it's he becomes so obsessed with finding this girl, Maura Murray, who disappeared, not because he cares about her life. He does not care about her. He does not give a single shit. And his wife, at one point, asks him, there are so many other cases. There are so many other things that are, like, more interesting, have more hype, have this, that. Why do you want to solve this crime so bad? And he seriously, seriously says that he wants to solve it because he knows for a fact that he's smarter than whoever it is that did this to her, and he wants to prove that he's smarter than them. Okay, here's the thing. It's one thing to think it. It's another thing to say it. And it's a totally other thing to write it, publish it, and put it out into the universe. James Ritter! You couldn't have lied? You couldn't have lied and been like, I care. Like, oh my God, is she alive? Like he literally has like stated in the book he did not care if she was dead or not. Like he didn't give a shit. And also, 
he is not cool because what he would do, and I'm like, again, why would you admit that? You could have left that shit out of the book and nobody would have known, is that when he wants to get information and he's going to like victims, relatives, like suspects, different stuff like that, especially the relatives, is he will not take no for an answer. And if like, if he calls them or emails them and they say no or they don't respond, multiple times in the book, he will like say in one point he's hiding out he, like it's like a key card for a building for an apartment building and he sneaks in when another tenant goes in he sneaks in and hides in the stairwell until this person comes out and follows them berating them with questions what I, i'm not rooting for you at all james like i don't want you to succeed i want mara to be found but i don't want you to find her number five is flock by kate stewart and I'm sure you're probably asking validly why I picked this book up. It was on sale on Audible and I was trying out some romances, okay? Some of which did land. So it wasn't fruitless, okay? But this book is so bad and toxic. And I know there's, there's toxicity in romances that can be for you, you know? That can be for you. I've read a couple and I've enjoyed. This, this toxicity, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I was like, I, I didn't just not want to fuck. I wanted to fight. I wanted to fight. This man in this book takes this girl's Apple watch, throws it on the ground and crushes it with his shoe because he says that he doesn't believe in the construct of time. What? What? I'm sorry. What? I want to put my hands around a grown man's throat. Speaking of grown men, why are they trying to act like these people are adults? They're 18 years old. They are 18 years old and doing shit like this? I don't think so. I don't think so. I was like, Kate Stewart, you know what you could have done? Is all these things that they're doing make them seem like they're adults? You could have made them adults. Why did you choose to make them 18 years old? Why was that the choice that you thought was like the best idea? I don't like that. And then also, it's just like one girl who's just okay. And all of the quote, hottest boys alive are like dropping to their knees to be with her. Okay, Sookie Stackhouse. Number three, keep it in the family by John Mars. More like you should have kept it to yourself, John Mars. I don't know what's going on with this man. He, he wrote a couple good books and now I'm kind of wondering if he even wrote them because the stuff he's been coming out with in the last couple of years, you know that his editor and publisher has got to be like, John, I know you have a contract, but what's going on? Like, have you been possessed? Are you okay? Because this shit's like literally terrible. It's so bad. And listen, I'm not even going to tell you anything about what this book is about. Who the fuck cares? Do not read this. It's literally terrible. But I'll just tell you a couple reasons why I hated it. Okay. Just a couple little ditties. So one, the writing is so lazy and terrible. It literally just reads like a diary. It just, it literally reads like, dear diary, I snuck into her house and watched her as she slept and she didn't notice. Isn't that crazy? I'm going to do it again tomorrow. Like, it's so bad. It's so bad. And then it's so over the top. Like, all the shit that was going on, there was no red herrings. It was just plot twist, plot twist, plot twist that made no sense over stupid. There's literally a part of the book where they find children's skeletons, skeletal, completely skeletons that have been there since the 80s. And there's hair on the skull. Like, it's a full head of hair. I'm sorry. Have you even watched, like, an episode of Bones, an episode of CSI, anything? skulls don't have hair like the bone doesn't have hair like i'm just like oh what do you john mark is this the first is this the first book you ever wrote and even if it was the first book you ever wrote i think you probably would have known that a skeletal skeleton wouldn't have a full head of hair okay and speaking of that there's a bunch of um violence against children like a lot of descriptive violence against children and it's not cute and it's gross and then also the main character is pregnant and like why in these thrillers do these authors love making that a thing? Like they love making it a thing and they always do it so terribly because they're all men that do this shit. But, okay, there's a point. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna read it. There's a quote. I can't find my favorite quote, which means it's the worst, but this quote. Now I am standing over her, my face directly above hers, my mouth next to her nose. I gently exhale so that she breathes me in and I become the oxygen that fills up her lungs and feeds her baby. I'm sorry. John Mars has parents. 
that have to pretend to be proud of him. Like, but the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing. I'm sorry, I have one more thing to say. I have another thing to say. There's a point in this book where one of the characters sneaks in to this woman's house while she's sleeping and leans over her while she's sleeping and spits into her mouth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My second worst book of the year could have been number one. These were interchangeable, but it's Vladimir by Julie Mae Jonas. I want to know every single book of the month employee that greenlit this to be a pick. What are you talking about? I was shocked. I was genuinely surprised reading this book, how offensive and how terrible it is. It's so so bad. So this is something that I've gotten flack for, okay? There are so many people on Goodreads that are like, that's not what happened. I'm like, yeah, it is. Yes, it is. I had the physical book. I read with my freaking eyes. That literally happened, okay? So the main character is a rape apologist and a rape defender, okay? And people are saying that she wasn't. Yes, she is. Yes, she okay, read the book then. Read the book then and then come back and let's talk about it. Because, I'm sorry, I'm getting mad. Um, This is about this woman, she's a professor and her husband is also a professor. And she says that she knew a long time ago that he was a quote, cad. She says that word. That he's a cad and told him that he could sleep with other women because she didn't think that she'd be able to keep him otherwise because she's so insanely insecure. And when I say insanely, I mean, there's not a single page that goes by without her disparaging her body. Like over and over and over and over again. And while I understand that that is an intrusive thought and that that is something that women deal with, absolutely a thousand percent, it's so annoying. You can't write it on every single page. That you can't do that. That repetition is so annoying. So that was terrible. But then here's the, is that she knows that he is having sex, having sexual relations with his 19 year old students, 19 year old and acts like, oh, they're 19. They're not, they're not 17. So that's fine. It's not illegal. Okay. But, th but he's a teacher for starters, but she knows that. And she says, she says that it's okay because when she was a college student, she would have wanted to have sex with a professor. So why keep that from the youth of America? What? And then 28 different girls. This is why I'm like, what are y'all talking about? What are y'all talking about defending this book? I'm, I'm going to fight. Is 28 different girls at this school come forward saying that they were sexually like led astray and manipulated and groomed by this man. 28 different girls. And the main character says that um, they should be more sexually liberated and basically like they should stop complaining literally literally and she says it to them there's three girls that come to her office to talk about it and they're like why are you married to this guy and she's like why are you complaining like don't you think he's hot i'm like and then it gets so much oh my god that doesn't get worse than that it gets equally as bad continually because she becomes obsessed with this young teacher that she thinks is really hot and i mean obsessed and you think like oh yeah she's just crazy but shit turns annie wilkes really fucking fast because he's not interested in her like like that you know I'm like not really and when I tell you that like zip ties are unwillingly used on him and the gaslighting after that and the ending is trash and I just I would need an entire thesis explaining one single merit of this book for me to give it a single ounce of grace for my number one Worst book of the year. It's tied with number two, honestly, but it is Nine Lives by Peter Swanson. And it's for a myriad of reasons. One, how dare Peter Swanson do this again? This is like John Mars. John Mars, Riley Sager, Peter Swanson, they can't stop missing. They literally can't stop missing. Every single book that they keep coming out with is garbage. It's so bad. And the thing about Peter Swanson is that it is offensive to other authors because he's always spoiling other mystery thrillers in his books. Like he has any right to speak. Like he has any right to speak. Like his books are not bad. I mean, the camera killing is good, but every single other book has been one star. Truly, horrifically terrible. This book, the audacity, the audacity to say that it is, and, and then there were none retelling, one, because the book's terrible. Two, because it completely rips off and then there were none. If you've ever seen the movie, watched the play, read the book, you can tell 
exactly what the plot twist is and exactly what's going to happen, who's going to die and everything in this book because it completely rips off and then there were none. Here's the thing. I read this a while ago and I read it for the book troupe with uh, McKay and Marcy and Gabby and she so lovingly had me on the live show and we all hated the book. So it's a very interesting discussion. If you want to go and just see somebody rant about this book for like an hour and a half, you can click that link down below. It was very funny, very, very funny. And I get into a lot of spoilers and you need to get to the part where I spoil the motivation behind the crime because what the, f are you kidding me? Like, are you kidding me? It's so stupid. The plot, like the motive behind these crimes is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. And also this person was part of the original crime. So how fucking dare you act like you have, you have the audacity, you have the right to take the lives of other people when you were fucking involved? disgusting like I just bleh, so gross and also at the very beginning of this book you like open up in the first couple chapters with a guy taking an erectile dysfunction pill so that he can be ready to go ready to bone down when his wife greets him at the door and she has to greet him in a white robe because that's what he demands in his greeting and then we follow that up very closely with a grandma talking to her grandson about um and then they were none but she calls it 10 little inward and he says that that word's fine and she's like oh well, we're not allowed to say that anymore and he's like why not my daddy says it all the time and proceeds to say the n-word with a hard er multiple times and here's the thing peter swanson doesn't even have he didn't even have like the wherewithal to pretend like he was using it to villainize a character he just did it cuz just cause. And he thought that he could get away with it because that was the actual first title of the book. Why do you think they changed it, Peter? Peter. They changed the title twice, actually. They changed it from that to 10 Little Indians to And Then There Were None because it's fucked up. <sighs> That's a book, and I don't suggest this. I'm sorry if you're looking at me. I actually threw that book away instead of putting it in a free little library because I didn't want to bequeath that. I did not want to put that out into the universe. So um, don't read it. Wow, I really started out being pretty decent, I would say, even understanding. And I should have known we were going to ramp up and up and up. I was like, Katie, keep it, keep it in check, keep it in check. We, we, you had me in the first half. You know, I had y'all in the first half. I was being almost, almost nice, I would say. Um, and in the end, hopefully y'all don't like any of those books. If you did, I'm sorry. I genuinely am sorry. If you've gotten this far into the video, leave the emoji of the person rolling their eyes because that's how I feel about all these books. Like when I hear them pop up, I'm like, God, terrible. If you want to follow me on Goodreads or Instagram, they are going to be linked down below as well as my Patreon and a myriad of other links to help support this channel in any way. Please comment below and tell me what your worst book of the year is because I actually think it's so funny to hear about that. Even if it's a book I love, I'm like, I just love when people are passionate in either direction about books, good or bad. I don't care. I don't like meh, okay? I want you to either be enraged or enraptured. Uh -huh. So anyway, all of that to say, I hope that you're having an amazing day, evening, night, dusk, dawn, whatever it is you're having and whatever part of the world you are currently having it in. And I will see you in a video coming very soon. Bye.